In this video we will show you how to scan and the sonar anatomy required to perform an ultrasound guided paravertebral block. This is an extremely useful block for chest wall, breast surgery and upper abdominal incisions. It can reliably provide analgesia from T1 to T7. For a unilateral block the typical volume used is 20 mL of a drug like 0.5% levobupivacaine. If performing bilateral blocks be careful of doses used. To generate our image, we use a high-frequency linear probe placed in the paramedian orientation to generate a sagittal slice through the patient's upper thorax. We start by scanning lateral to the midline. Underneath the skin and subcutaneous tissue, you will visualize the trapezius muscle. The T1 vertebra has been shown here for orientation. Deep to trapezius, you will see the rhomboid major and rhomboid minor muscles. Deep to these muscles, you will see the following structures. Here we've got the vertebral body with its corresponding spinous process and transverse process, the costo-transverse junction, and the rib articulating with the transverse process. An important structure is a superior costo-transverse ligament, which traverses from the rib below to the transverse process above. This provides the gateway into the paravertebral space. Deep to the costo-transverse ligament, you will find the spinal nerve lying within the paravertebral space. Note here the close proximity of the pleura. This is a cross-sectional slice at the upper thoracic level. You will identify the spinal cord giving off the left and right spinal nerves with the ventral ramus and the dorsal ramus illustrated. The costo-transverse ligament is coming from the rib below to articulate with the transverse process above and provides the gateway into the paravertebral space. Note the close proximity to the sympathetic ganglion and the pleura laterally. The triangular shaped paravertebral space is highlighted here. The patient can be positioned in the sitting, the lateral or the prone position. This patient is in the sitting position. and We're palpating down from the C7 spinous process, T1, T2 and T3. The probe is initially placed in a paramedian orientation over the ribs laterally. The image generated looks like this, with skin, subcutaneous tissue, trapezius and rhomboid muscles, with ribs and pleura below. The ribs have a characteristic hyperechoic rim with a dropout artifact below them, and the pleura is visualised deep to that with this comet tail appearance. The external and internal intercostal muscles, as well as the innermost intercostal muscles, are demonstrated here for clarity. The paramedian orientation of the probe is maintained as it is slid towards the midline. You will note the ribs travel deeper into the tissues until you get to the costo-transverse junction. At this point, the curved appearance of the rib is replaced by a much more superficial, flatter, tombstone-like appearance of the transverse process. In this annotation, with the probe held truly paramedian over the transverse processes, you can see the superior costo-transverse ligament and the paravertebral space below it. The pleura has been highlighted here for ease of identification, although with a true paramedian orientation, it may not be identifiable. In order to clearly identify the pleura, the beam of the ultrasound probe needs to be directed laterally. In some patients, to facilitate in-plane needling, the cordad part of the probe needs to be rotated away from the midline so that it's scanning over the rib in order to facilitate in-plane needling. This is the position we adopt when performing an in-plane, ultrasound-guided, upper thoracic paravertebral block. In this real block, you'll see the needle being introduced from the right-hand side of the screen, cordad, in-plane. It's about to traverse the superior costo-transverse ligament at this point. As it passes through the costo-transverse ligament, a test dose of local anaesthetic will cause the pleura to drop as indicated thus. The needle is then advanced further into the paravertebral space, ensuring the needle tip is kept outside the pleura and watching for the pleural drop with each administration of local anaesthetic. The actual dose of local anaesthetic to be administered is injected in small 2 to 5 mL alicots, ensuring aspiration prior to each injection and ensuring the pleura is moving out of the way and the needle tip is visualised throughout. In this post-procedure scan, by sliding the probe cordad first and then cephalad, you can identify the expanded paravertebral space with local anaesthetic visible outside the pleura. In this example, we have managed to generate 
five spaces of local anaesthetic injection, which can be easily achieved with 20 ml of local anaesthetic. Finally, some tips or pearls to ensure a successful block. Take care with patient comfort and positioning. If utilising the sitting position, ensure that somebody is standing in front of the patient to make sure they're safe. The person sighting the block should practice optimal ergonomics, ensuring that the probe, the needle and the ultrasound are all nicely aligned. Intravenous access should be obtained before sighting the block and the patient should be fully monitored. It is often useful to use sedation as the needle insertion and the pleura peeling away from the vertebral body can cause some discomfort. We advocate in-plane needling, ensuring that the practitioner finds the needle tip at all times. Before injecting local anaesthetic, ensure that you aspirate to exclude air, CSF or blood. Use a test dose of an adrenaline containing solution to exclude an intravascular injection. And finally, when actually injecting the local anaesthetic, ensure you remind the patient to breathe because breathing ensures maximal spread and prevents them from performing a Valsalva manoeuvre and fainting.